Hi there! As you might know, I own two Prusa 3D printers. The Prusa i3 Mark III and the Prusa Mini, which both do a terrific job. Owning such 3D printers helps me a lot when it comes to creating electronics projects. But some long-time viewers of mine might also know that I used to own an XCALF CNC machine. The problem with that machine though was that it was super loud and thus I could not use it in my apartment for very long, so I gave it away at some point. But nevertheless, it is safe to say that owning a CNC machine grants you access to a whole new territory of projects that you can create. That is why I was rather excited when the company Snapmaker reached out to me and asked whether I wanted to test out their new 3-in-1 machine, the Snapmaker 2.0 which is a 3D printer, laser engraver slash cutter and CNC machine all in one. So in this video I will show you how easy it is to assemble, I will tell you how useful I think each function is and finally I will give you my verdict whether I think it is worth its original 1800 euro price tag and whether it is a more quieter replacement for my old CNC machine. And for full disclosure, this machine was sent to me free of charge. But that doesn't mean that I will go easy on it. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Feel free to visit their website jlcpcb.com to not only find out what awesome PCB and assembly services they offer, but also to easily upload your GERPA files and thus order affordable and high quality PCBs quickly. First off, in order to get some space for the new machine, I cleared out one compartment of my heavy duty shelf to position my Prusa 3D printers inside there. They did fit perfectly, except for the spool holder of my Mark III, but we can 3D print a replacement for it I found on Thingiverse later on. Before that though, it was time to bring in the big package of the Snapmaker 2.0 A350, which is the version with the biggest build platform. After opening it up, I was greeted with the manual which in hindsight was very well written, detailed and easy to follow. Moving on though, underneath the manual I found not only cardboard boxes with 5 linear rails, but also boxes with all kinds of parts, components and tools which are required for the machine. I have to say that they did a pretty awesome job on the packaging side of things. To start the assembly, I firstly opened up the tool and accessory box, which comes with pretty much everything you could ever need to assemble slash use this machine. But for now, I simply got the screwdriver ready and started screwing the feet to the base plates. And as a side note, all bags with parts were labeled very nicely, so finding the right ones was always a breeze. But anyway, next I unpacked two linear rails, which I secured to the base plates. Then I got myself the metal brackets and attached them to the base plate as well. After then also adding the touchscreen holder, it was time to mount the Z-axis linear rails to the metal brackets. The last linear rail for the tool heads was then secured to the Z-axis rails. And just like that, the main structure was complete. So I moved on by adding the Y and Z axis adapters and cables to the system, which I then plugged into the main controller that I secured beforehand to one Z axis. After then also hooking up the touchscreen, it was time to unpack the power module, which I also promptly hooked up to the main controller. And after only one hour into the assembly, I was already at the point to choose one tool head. And I started with the 3D printing one. So I screwed it to the linear rail and plugged a wire into it, which I then connected to the controller. After then adding the spool holder to the frame, I stumbled upon the most annoying parts. 
using 22 screws to attach the heated beds to the machine. The small problem I have with this is that when you want to change to laser cutting or the CNC function, you will always have to remove those screws, put on another work surface and tighten the screws again. And while I think that Snapmaker did an awesome job with the cable system and the main controller when it comes to being a modular system, I would have appreciated another solution than using tons of screws. But nevertheless, by using an electric drill, you can get this done fairly quickly. And after placing the removable beds onto the heated beds, it was finally time to flip the main power switch and do the initial Wi-Fi setup. As soon as that was done, I performed the usual 3D printer Z offset calibration and inserted the included black PLA filaments into the print heads. Now it was finally time to download, install and start the Snapmaker software. And what I can say about it after testing the machine for around 30 hours is that it does work without any problems. But it is definitely not polished when it comes to user convenience. For example, the Prusa Slicer software gives you lots of pre-made settings that you can easily use. While with the Snapmaker software, you will have to enter the printing and filament settings all on your own. This is also the case for the laser engraving slash cutting and CNC machining. Moving on though, after placing the first 3D model for my new spool holder inside the software, I sliced it and simply sent it over to the machine through Wi-Fi, which was pretty handy. And just like that, the machine started printing without any problems and did its job pretty well. Now I 3D printed 4 more parts with this machine, while I used my Prusa Mini for 2 other parts, so that I could quickly add a filament guide as well as a spool holder to my Mark III to make it functional again. And that means it was time for comparison print with the well-known Benchy model. For that, I tried to use pretty much the same print speed settings for all three machines. And after around one and a half hour of printing, the results were in. I have to say that the Prusa Mini 1 is pretty flawless, followed by the Mark III one with minor imperfections. And last but not least, we got the Snapmaker 1, which is still good, but there were some noticeable imperfections. There's also another problem with the Snapmaker machine, which you might be able to hear when turning it on. No idea why, but the power supply fan is always at 100%. And during the 3D printing, the machine becomes even louder due to the moving of the linear rails. In comparison, this is how the Prusa Mini sounds. And this is how the Mark III sounds. So in my opinion, the Snapmaker is great as a 3D printer if you need large prints. But for everything small, I would highly recommend the Prusa Mini, since that one is also more budget friendly. And with that being said, it was time to move on to the laser engraving slash cutting, for which I got myself a few different materials to test. Before that though, I did a pretty straightforward camera calibration, followed by a laser focus calibration onto my workpiece, which was 3mm thick plywood. Then the software took pictures of the material, which I think is an awesome feature when it comes to determining where you want to cut the material. Afterwards, all I had to do was click start and the laser started cutting the example projects which was pretty awesome to look at, but don't forget to wear laser safety goggles. After around 1.5 hours, the machine was done, but I should have done more passes to completely cut through the material, which is why I repeated this test with some foam board. This time the laser cut through it like butter, and its precision was also pretty great. Last but not least, I also tinkered around with a bit of laser engraving, which turned out fine, but I will certainly have to learn what power levels to use with which material. So all in all, the laser function works great, 
and is pretty much as loud as the 3D printing. Which means it was time to replace the work surface and the tool heads and move on to the CNC function. To test it, I secured a 6mm thick piece of plywood to the work surface with the included clamps, secured the mill to the tool heads and used the touchscreen to set the work origin on the material. Then I loaded the example project and once again simply clicked upload. And as you can see, the machine did its job without any problems. And to my own surprise, it was rather quiet in comparison to my old CNC machine. Which is awesome news for me, since that means I can use it more often in future videos. And after one hour, the CNC task was complete and looked pretty awesome. But once again, I should have definitely cut deeper into the material. As a last test, I also tried some PCB milling, which also seemed possible, but I would have to do way more fine tuning for that, which is not the point of this video. And that brings us to my verdict. Due to the all metal construction and high quality of this machine, as well as the fact that all promised functions of it do work good or very good, I have to say that I think its price point is justified. Of course, there are some minor problems with its loudness and the software user interface. But besides that, I really do like the machine. And I hope that I can use it in future projects. And with that being said, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!